How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I will be going over who I think the Gold Knights should go after at the trade deadline and what I kind of think slash am willing to give up. So let's go over that first. So I have a list of five players that are, you know, some players. So we have three guys on the forward group. William Carrier, Nick Waugh, and Ryan Reeves. And I think the most you can get is for Nick Waugh. Uh, I think Ryan Reeves will fetch the least. But, so let's go over them. So Ryan Reeves is at the bottom. He's making 1.75. And he has three points, one goal, two assists in 34 games. So, yeah. Then, Nick Waugh. The, Reeves would be more to open up some cap. Uh, same with Carrier, and same with a player that I have. I have two defensemen on this list. Uh, so, Nick Waugh, in 34 games, has one goal, five assists for six points, and he's making 750 grand. So, he could probably fetch the most return, just because he's not the oldest player. He still has upside. And, yeah. Next up, we have William Carrier, who... In 33 games, three goals, five assists for eight points, and is making 1.4. Now, William Carey has picked it up as of late, but a, two weeks ago, he had, like, one goal and two assists. So, he's been hot lately, but how long is that going to last? And maybe now, his trade value is higher than ever. Plus, trade deadline is in six days from when I'm recording this video. So, yeah. Next up, uh, on the defensive side... Uh, Nick Holden, he's been more of the 7th or 8th defenseman uh, this year. I think that you can have a decent guy be Dylan Coglin as your 7th defenseman for co to come in and play. Now, one option that would be interesting... So, by the way, Holden has 2 assists in 15 games. He's making 1.7. Yeah. Next, my, my interesting one would be Braden McNabb. Now, Brayden McNabb has had a couple good games, and he's a good defenseman. But, he's a minus. Now, I know he doesn't score a lot. He has a goal and two assists in 22 games. I know he's been injured this season, but he's making 2.5. If you get out Brayden McNabb, and you can have three D pairs, one with a defensive guy, and one with an offensive guy, that's very interesting. Because you can have a very balanced lineup with that. You are, I would be very interested to see what a White Cloud Petrangelo pairing could look like. Just a thought. And then uh, the tiers of prospects. I don't think anyone is going to get past the Elvinez tier. Just because I don't think that the Golden Knights are willing to get rid of a guy like Dorofeyev, who they just worked so hard to get, or a Krebs. But a guy like Elvinez. A guy like Dugan, those kind of guys are guys that could get shipped out. Um, and the Golden Knights have quite a variety of picks. They have a, a first this year and next year. They have two seconds this year and a second next year. They have no thirds this year, but two thirds next year. A fourth this year and next year. A fifth this year and two fifths next year. And then a sixth this year and next year. And then a seventh next year and next year. This year and next year. So they have an interesting amount of things to give up. I think the guys that you're going to want to get rid of are probably a Reeves, a Carrier, or a Holden. Just because of their cap. And that would be necessary in getting some of the names that I have on this list. So some of the interesting guys, so let's start at the beginning. So uh, the first big name that I would be more than happy to get, Matthias Janmark in Chicago. Now, I know he signed there as a free agent this past summer, but in 39 games, 10 goals, 9 assists, 19 points, and he's making 2.3. So already we're 10 points ahead of anyone on, this, on the list that I had. And I think, well, the Golden Knights' main need is scoring, from the depth. Now, I know it's been much better lately, but that's because it's had to be. So, when the top six are scoring, the bottom six should not be quiet. So, yes. So, Matthias Janmark be a great third, second line option. Great middle six forward. All right, next, we have two players from Detroit. Bobby Ryan in on Detroit 
33 games, 7 goals, 7 assists for 14 points, and is making $1 million. He has 5 more points than Carrier, and is making $400,000 less. So Bobby Ryan in Detroit has 14 points in 33 games. Next, Robbie Fabry in Detroit, 30 games, 10 goals, 8 assists, 18 points. Now, I tried not to go over 3. He's the most expensive player on the list, making 2.9. He's probably, that's what hurts him the most, in my opinion, is the 2.9. But, you know, there's always, you know, a holding cap, and there's all sorts of ways to finagle it. Uh, but 18 points in 30 games on Detroit ain't bad. Next, Colin Blackwell in New York. He's been uh, hot and cold this year, but uh, nine goals, four assists for 13 points, and he's only making 725 grand. Very, very good pickup. If you could trade him for Nick Waugh and, you know, a third or something, it's a decent, decent pickup, even if second. So, yeah. Then, in L.A., we have Trevor Moore. Now, Trevor Moore... It, his amount of scoring has hurt him the most, but he's still scoring at a higher pace than any of, of these three forwards on the list. So Trevor Moore, in 37 games, has five goals, nine assists for 14 points, but he's making 775 grand. So not a bad pickup, and he's in the division, so it wouldn't be that hard to pick him up. Well, you may have to pay a bit more, but I mean, it might not be as hard logistically to get him to your team. Then. Vancouver, this would be the hard... Him and the guy next are going to be the hardest logistically to get because they're not in the country. So Tyler Mott, in 20 games, has 7 points. Now, I know 6 of them are goals, but that's what we're looking for here. He's making 975000 which is pretty good. And in 20 games, 7 points is not bad. So, yeah. Then, in Ottawa, Nick Paul. Now, Nick Paul's a very interesting one. He has three goals and ten assists for 13 points, so obviously more of a setup man. But he's only making 1.3, and in Ottawa, he's plus zero, so he's, you know, a mute plus minus, but he's not a negative. And he's only got ten penalty minutes, and, you know, some problems with the bottom six, they take a lot of penalties. So ten penalty minutes in 39 games, it's really not bad. Then, uh... I know I'm gonna I'm gonna get my fan card taken away. We don't deal with these people, but in San Jose, Ryan Donato has 37 goal in 37 games, has six goals and 12 assists for 18 points. He's only making 1.9. I know, I know, but listen, the Bruins deal with the Leafs all the time and. Works out pretty good usually, you know. Tyler Sagan, Tuka Rask. Works out pretty good sometimes. Now, that is if the Golden Knights are the Bruins in this situation. And with my luck, they're probably the Leafs. So, yeah. Uh, next, uh, another interesting one in Chicago. Carl Soderberg. He's only making $1 million. And in 33 games, 6 goals, 8 assists for 14 points. So again, more scoring is needed. Again... Carl Soderberg, you know, these are rental guys. A lot of these guys are going to be rentals. The Gold Knights, tight to the cap. The cap's not moving up for two years, right? Something like that. So, yeah. And then lastly, my final really, really good pick. And this is if this team does what I think they're going to do and fall off because I don't think they're they're playing way over their heads right now, in my opinion. And that's Nashville. I'm sorry, Nashville fans. But your last 10 games don't reflect the rest of your season. So, yeah. So, Cal Yarnrock in Nashville. 33 games, 11 goals, 8 assists for 19 points. And he's making 2 mil. So, 19 points, 2 mil. So, I'll go Yarnrock, Donato, Soderberg are three of my better choices. You know, Nick Paul is a good one in Ottawa. Trevor Moore is a good one in L.A. So is Colin Blackwell in New York. I would like to get some uh, one of these guys at the trade deadline. Now, do I think that the Golden Knights are going to make more than any any more than one move? And is it going to be for anything more than a depth of guy? Uh, no, it's not. The Golden Knights have less than my house costs in cap space. Like, 
<laughs> it's not going to be a huge amount. Unless they're shipping out Braden McNabb, Nick Holden, and Ryan Reeves, which I highly doubt. And you're probably not a better team afterwards. See, what you want to be with some of these trades is you want to be a better team. And I don't see that that's the reason why I'm kind of iffy on trading out McNabb. Is, are the Golden Knights a better team without McNabb? Now, are the Golden Knights... Now, I know that they Reeves brings the physical edge to the game, and I like him for it. But this season, his age is starting to show. And he hasn't been as physical as you'd like him to be. Uh, Carrier has been relatively good as of late. But Nick Waugh is invisible almost every game. So, maybe he needs a change of scenery. Uh, I think some of the prospects uh, could be some interesting guys going out. But we'll see how it goes. These are just my ideas for who the Golden Knights could go after. I don't think they're going to go after goaltending. They definitely don't need it. And the defense, when you have Coglin, White Cloud, and Hague, and they're young, and that's your depth, guys, like they usually don't play anywhere higher than third pair, those are some pretty good players who are the Golden Knights defense stacked. You know, Theodore Martinez is on fire this season. Alex Petrangelo has quietly been pretty good. You know, 11 points in 22 games. Half a point a game for a defenseman ain't bad. And McNabb is the only guy who I am kind of iffy on. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. If you'd like to get my thoughts on games during games, you can follow me on Twitter at 2 underscore pad. And that is it for this one, guys. I will see you next time.